Like many other sub-Saharan women living in Tunisia, she was contacted in her country by an intermediary of a human trafficking network who promised to find her a well-paid job in Tunisia. In January 2020, fleeing unemployment and poverty in her country, Blanche Neige, a 24-year-old from the Ivory Coast, boarded a plane to Tunis Carthage Airport in Tunisia. A second intermediary placed her as a domestic servant within a Tunisian family of four living in a big house. A job that did not meet her expectations and the promises of the intermediary. But above all, she still had no idea of the ordeal that she would face. Her salary has been fixed, without her knowledge, at only 450 dinars, 150 euros per month, and she will not be able to receive it for at least six to eight months. She must first reimburse her debt to her employer, who paid the costs of her trip, including a commission to the intermediary, a debt that cost her at least three to five times the price of the plane ticket. The noose tightens around Blanche Neige. She had to accept and was held hostage in a situation that was similar to slavery. She works silently without respite, days and nights, seven days a week, without any predefined working hours or breaks, or even a weekly rest day as required by law. Her daily life is spent between preparing and serving breakfast, feeding the kitten, helping to prepare lunch and dinner, washing the dishes three or four times a day, washing and drying the clothes, cleaning the house, removing the dust from the heavy carpets and sofas, cleaning every corner, looking after her employer's two energetic children, feeding them, picking up and putting away their toys that are always lying on the floor. Even the short break she sometimes takes in the kitchen to take a breather and ease her back pain would be a psychological ordeal. She's always on her guard, ready to jump out of the chair because she fears her employer catches her doing nothing. Her old Chinese phone, which she brought from the Ivory Coast and doesn't even know how to use, is only used to look at the few family photos she has carefully saved. She is not allowed to have an internet connection. No internet for Blanche Neige. I'm afraid she'll make a boyfriend on Facebook, said her employer. Far from the family warmth she misses, her only emotional moment is when her employer hands her the phone for a video call with her family in the Ivory Coast. The call starts with a broad smile and ends with a frustration that we can read on her face. The call takes place in the presence of her employer, and Blanche Neige cannot express what is in her heart. Her employer is depressive, sometimes in a bad mood, sometimes in a good mood, and always very demanding with her, often scolding her and sometimes disrespecting her. You're stupid, Blanche Neige. You're silly. She has lunch and dinner alone in the kitchen. This may be her choice, but the only exception is made during the holy month of Ramadan when she can dine with the family only when there are no guests and a place for her around the table. Like thousands of sub-Saharan for her, Tunisia is just a transit country where she has to work hard to pay for a perilous place on a clandestine boat to Europe. As Blanche Neige cleverly put it with a wise smile, for her, Europe is to taste another sauce and to be able to tell my children one day what I have experienced and not what others told me. But Blanche Neige would not be aware of the dangers of living in Europe. Illiterate, lost in another country with a different culture from her own, without a residence permit or a job, she would be easy prey for another human trafficking network, such as prostitution. Her greatest dream in life is to marry a man she loves and who will cherish her forever. Thank you.